Hi, let's talk about something different today. Normally I'm talking about weddings or I'm talking about gear and mostly about gear I guess. Today I want to talk about um, Lightroom, portraits, a studio shoot, so a bit different. The focus of today is going to be um, setting up lights in a studio. Now you might not ever want to do a studio shoot but the reason I'm doing this is because at weddings, 50% um, of the weddings I do, the couple want some sort of a portrait shot. Uh, and so I'll set up a flash or two or three um, and I'll do some portrait shots. My problem is that every time I do that, I do it differently. Um, sometimes I use a softbox, sometimes a reflecting umbrella, sometimes I shoot through white umbrella, sometimes... I'll have the flash here sometimes. I'm just not consistent. And and for my own benefit, um, a couple of days ago, I rented a studio for a couple of hours. I got three lovely ladies along to do some portrait shots with them. That enabled me to play around, get a setup that I now know I can replicate at any wedding in five minutes and get some pretty decent portrait shots. So that's one thing. I'll explain what I did, how I did it, camera, flash and all that sort of thing in a moment. Then we'll go into Lightroom. I'll show you some of the shots I got and more importantly I'll show you how I can get pretty decent sort of portrait photos in Lightroom without using Photoshop without using, I've got Portrait Pro, which does a pretty good job, but it, it sometimes looks a bit too artificial. But Lightroom now, if you haven't got Lightroom, by the way, uh, I'm not sure what other editing software does. I've only ever used Lightroom. But I pay, I think it's about £10 a month for Lightroom, Photoshop, and a couple of other things that I rarely use. But Lightroom and Photoshop, for £10 a month, um, it's so useful uh, I, I, I couldn't live without it. Every single one of my wedding photos is edited in Lightroom and the, the problem with doing um, portrait shots is you need to do quite a lot of work on the face usually and that can take an awful long time. I've had three as I say models along um, and I want to give them probably 10 photos each. So that's 30 photos. If I did this in Photoshop using something like frequency separation or something clever like that, it would take me probably 20, 15, 20 minutes per photo. Uh, I could create an action which would go through and automate some parts of it. But I reckon I, it would... I'm not brilliant in Photoshop, so I, I reckon it would still take me 15 minutes. In Lightroom, we're talking more like two minutes. And I'll show you how to do that. Let me talk first of all about the gear. Get that out of the way. <laughs> um, so Z5, now on the Z5, about a week ago, Nikon released the latest update. We're talking February 2023, update for the Z5. The biggest part of that for me was the uh, autofocus improvements. And they are significant. Um, Previously, the two things that didn't work particularly well was eye autofocus uh, and face detect. The Z6 II that I've got isn't brilliant. Um, sometimes it'll pick up a face. If you move the camera and come back, same face won't pick it up. Other times it'll pick it up and pick the eye up. So it's just not 100% consistent. The Z5 is slightly worse. Um, and most of the time I end up shooting using the, the either single point or D9. Um, it would be nice to use the tracking box. You can press the OK button or I've set up another button to bring up the tracking box and track someone's face once you've chosen which one it is. Um, doesn't work particularly well because if you move around a little bit, the box which started out on their face gradually moves itself around uh, so that after a couple of seconds, a couple of movements, it's no longer even on their face. So you're not sure if it's focused on the face or not. They've improved that. It is 100% better. Um, you can now put the box over someone's face 
hit the back button focus, move around, and it's stuck on their face. It really does lock on very well. Have, I haven't yet used it at a real wedding, but it looks a huge improvement. And it seems like it's picking up faces and eyes much better than it used to. I would say it's getting pretty close, uh, if not equal to the Z6 II. Hopefully that means they're gonna come out with an update for the Z6 II in the fairly near future. <laughs> Whether that's gonna be before the announcement of the, the Z8, the Z5 II, the Z6 III, or whatever else they're going to announce, I've no idea. But anyway, I use the Z5 because it's perfectly okay in a studio environment. Um, 85 uh, 1.4G lens on the FTZ adapter, and that was it. For the flash, uh, Godox flash trigger, uh, triggering an AD200 was my main light. Uh, the V1 was my a sort of shadow fuel light and I had an old Nikon um, flash on the floor. So let me explain briefly what I had. Um, the AD200 was in a, it's gone, <laughs> about a 36 inch, uh, just under a metre, um, softbox, two layers of diffusion panel. Point, if, if, I'm, if my model is straight in front of me here, then it's off to the right about 30 degrees as close as I could possibly get to the model without getting the corner of it in the shot. In fact, in some shots, I did actually get it just in the corner. So really close uh, and a little bit higher and a little bit pointing down, but not crazy high up or anything like that about sort of, I suppose the center of it was about here compared to the modeler's face. The V1 was about 45 degrees off to the left um, and a bit further back with no modifiers on at all, just straight uh, out the flash. I wanted something that really gave me a, um, a, a glint in their eye, and, and that was it. Plus, to fill in uh, some of the shadows that the main one created. Now, the main one being so close and in a quite a big box, very few shadows. Um, and actually, I made a mistake, um, and I'll just tell you about that because it might help you. The flash on this side was actually a bit too strong because I now notice when I go to edit them, I couldn't see it on the back of the camera, but once I get to um, in Lightroom and edit them, it actually created a little bit of a shadow on the background. The biggest problem I've had in the past with studio shoots is not getting shadows or, uh, or flash spill onto the background. I fixed that uh, because the flash is so close to the um, to the model, uh, the inverse square law means that by the time the light hit the backdrop, which was as far away as I could get it, um, the light is pretty insignificant. So that was my setup. Um, it was all done manually, manual on the camera, manual setup for the flashes. So it's a bit pointless telling you exactly what it was, but because it'll be different. But that was a setup. It was pretty easy. And at a wedding, I, I could set that up. Um, I'll pinch one of the bridesmaids and get her to stand there, set the flash up. It'd probably take me two minutes, and then we're ready to do some really good portrait shots. Let's jump into Lightroom, look at what I did, and talk about how to take a, um, a photo straight out of camera and process it and make it look rather nice, I think. So I've imported all the photos into Lightroom, obviously, uh, and this is all the photos, 404 I think it is, um, uh, and just out of interest on the Z5, I don't know if the update has improved the battery life, but I did 404 shots um, and I still had three bars left on the battery. Um, it starts out with five. So uh, a good deal of battery life left. I reckon I could have probably got seven or 800 shots out of one battery. And that's with uh, the EVF on and the uh, rear screen as well. And it's powering a flash. Um, so I, um, yeah, battery life is pretty damn good. It seems to be better than it used to be. So anyway, here we are setting up the, f the, the camera and the flash. Uh, and, and as you can see, yes, we're setting up the flash. And then on to the proper shoot. Um, and what I've done is I've, I've been through already and selected some in red. I've just um, hit six on the keyboard to mark those as red. Uh, some I've then edited already um, and I've marked those as 
uh, yellow. So if we now go into the develop module. So let's just look at this one. Let's just take this as an example shot. If I wanted to edit this from scratch, then what would I do? Well, she's actually got pretty darn good skin. I don't need to do a lot to her skin. But if we go to my other lady, Christine, um, let's pick one where she's facing towards us a bit more. Um, you can see even at 33 percent magnification we've got we've got a few things that we'd like to sort out i think um on her skin if you get 100 percent uh there's definitely some work we can do and that's I'm, I'm i'm going for a look um have i got it i haven't got it on here now anymore but i'm going for a look uh that a instagram um, photographer gets i'm just trying to think of her name elena Klanishkova or something like that. Um, she does absolutely wonderful portrait shots um, and that's a look that I'm going for. And that look is something like, let me pick one that I've done already, that look is something like this. So the skin on the face is softened, the eyes are highlighted and um, sort of made to stand out a bit more, lips probably made to stand out a little bit more and have a bit of shine, uh, hair shine uh, has got a little bit of shine. We've got some vignetting, uh, which certainly could um, create just using the flash, but it's a heck of a lot harder than doing a, f a few seconds work in Lightroom. Now, if we were to do this from scratch, this is gonna take, for the first time you do it, oh I don't know 10 minutes um, and what I would do from scratch is we go to masking we select the person sorry it's it's already detecting people and the first time it does it it might take a little while um, but it, it does get quicker afterwards. And bear in mind, I'm also recording video as well, so my computer's a bit slower than it would be. Now, once you've got the person selected, you can then ask Lightroom to find all the different parts of that person. So we can select face skin, body skin, eyebrows, the whites, the iris, the lips, the teeth, and the hair. And we can create a mask for each and every one of those and we can edit each of those separately um, and let's just start with the first one face skin now I've got some uh, some presets here uh, and one of those is soft skin which as the name suggests softens the skin but I might want to lift the exposure a little bit and I can change the amount if we just zoom in I can change the amount that it's affecting the skin on the amount slider, as you would suggest. If we come down here, it's doing nothing. If we go up to 200, it's just ridiculous. Uh, in the middle, it should be roughly where we want to be, possibly because um, Meredith hasn't got many in uh, blemishes or anything like that, maybe a bit less, but because part of what it's doing is altering every, it's altering every one of these sliders the same amount I might just want to increase the exposure just a tad okay so that would be the face um, the body um, would be the same I want soft skin and I want the any sort of skin on the body shoulders and arms and things to be a little bit darker than the face and I think we're pretty well there um, Eyebrows, we'll just sharpen those up a little bit. So we use sharpness. I don't know what that's done. A bit more texture. Maybe a bit more sharpness. Um, I'm just doing this quickly. You you would obviously spend some more time. I've got a custom one already for eye whites. And you just saw that pop up. Uh, if you look at the thing. So nothing done. Ridiculous. In the middle should be somewhere where we want to be. Um, iris and pupil again. I've got one that I've already saved. Iris enhance, which just makes them pop a little bit. You probably can't see it here. 
let's go into a hundred percent so it should be yes if you look at the irises it's not having an awful lot of effect so I'm going to leave it in the middle but I'm just going to increase the exposure a bit too much so about there uh, number six is lips I'm not going to touch those uh, teeth I'm not going to touch those basically because she's got her mouth shut so you can't see any teeth hair uh, again I've got another preset for hair which is absolutely ridiculous oh no that's so I thought it was going to be crazy but that's pretty good actually so I've now changed everything there there's another couple of masks that I would like to add and that is a radial mask um, and that is using my where's it gone flash circle preset which just sharpen things up a little bit more and gives a bit more brightness and then finally one more again another radial gradient which does exactly the opposite so this goes here um, I'm just gonna soften the edges um, remember from from here to here is where the effect is fading from um, and I'm going to invert this and I want it to do this one which is darken darken defocus so this will darken the outside and soften and sort of make the the outside even more out of focus because whilst I was shooting this one at 1.8 um, a bit later on uh, I changed the the f-stop to I think about 5.6 certainly f4 anyway um, I was experimenting so I wanted to find out so we can now just increase the shadows a bit and the exposure until we've got something along the lines that we want. Now her face is too bright so we can now turn that down a bit and it's just the exposure I want to get down so I'm just going to alter that till I get to the point where I'm happy with that. Okay let's now her hair has gone now a bit crazy so we go back to the hair reduce the effect of the hair shine And whilst Lightroom is pretty good at picking out um, face and eyes and all the other things, you can see at the back here, it's it just looks a bit weird. Um, it's picking up some light right on the back there. So occasionally you might need to do subtract with a brush and just get rid of that effect at the back there. Sometimes it is actually as photographed, but we'll just make sure there's nothing weird happening there okay we're pretty well done so what we can now do is save that as a preset and I've already saved two I've got one for Christine and I've got one for Meredith here and Roma who comes up shortly uh, called studio um, so just save it as a preset what we can now do is if we go to any photo completely uh, straight out of camera and just hit uh, studio it takes I reckon about 10 seconds for Lightroom to do all its stuff and we're done that was real time I haven't edited that out at all it's a little bit bright I'll just drop it down a touch on the exposure as you can see what I was saying earlier about the, the um, shadow there, when I was looking on the back of the camera I didn't notice that um, 
but doing the editing does tend to bring that out a bit more um, can't do much about that uh, just something to remember in future when, when I'm using a, um, a flash off to the left here to fill in any shadows uh, and to give a bit of a kick on this side <laughs> don't make it quite so bright make sure there's no light uh, no shadow being cast on the background um, I was very careful about not casting a shadow from the light from the flash on this side um, but I neglected to see that one so there we go not perfect but a learning experience and if you wanted to take um, shots of family friends or anything like that then some sort of basic lighting like I used here will definitely make the photos a heck of a lot better let's just have a look at Roma I'll just pick one from Roma no that's not Roma where's she gone here she is uh, Roma is a crazy young lady who I've done lots of shoots with she's a, a budding pop star um, so we go to the studio And this is happening in real time. I'm not editing this out at all. Um, but just compare how long this takes to how long it would take in Photoshop to get the same sort of quality of photo. Let's go for a square one on this. Let's make a bit of a... Uh, yeah. We'll go for that sort of angle. Um, just to do something different. And let's use a... just want to change the white balance a bit. Maybe a bit more. Okay, well, I'm happy with that. There's not much more I need to do. Um, the face is fine. The shoulder and the arm might be a bit bright. So we can go in and we can find... Which one is it? That one? Uh, so we can just either move the amount down or, because I'm just looking for the exposure to be a bit lower, I could reduce the highlights and reduce because I want the arm and shoulder to be just a tad less obvious, less bright than the face. Okay, I'd be happy with that. Um, so I hope you found that useful. You don't need to be ridiculously clever like you do in Photoshop. Um, to get that effect in Photoshop, a, a photo as, as good as that would take me, as I said earlier, 15-20 minutes per photo. Uh, here it's a couple of minutes. But, so it becomes a practical way of editing more than four or five photos. As always, I'm happy to answer any questions you've got. Get in touch. Uh, and uh, obviously if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your photography. Bye.